If you are learning how to make video games, you are eventually going to run into coroutines. In fact, you'll probably run into them pretty immediately because if you want to do anything with time, you will need to use coroutines. We're going to dive into some examples, explain how they work, and show you how you would implement these in your game. But first, let me introduce myself. Hi, I'm Holly. I'm a game developer who started making games in quarantine. Now I make content teaching you how to make your own games. So if that's your thing and this video is helpful, I would love for you to subscribe and stick around. The most important thing to know about coroutines is that if you want to write logic where time is a factor, there is a very good chance you will need a coroutine. When it comes to time in game development, it gets a little tricky and we need something special. But why? Programming is synchronous. Notice the cron in the word synchronous. Cron meaning time. All this means is that the code is read from one line to the next. So if I have a hundred lines of code, but I have an error on line 30, line 31 and beyond never gets read. So this presents a big problem when it comes to time. Coroutines allow you to write asynchronous functions inside of a synchronous script. That's all that it really is, but there are so many things that you can do with it. It's a script within a script. When you call a coroutine, it starts running, but it doesn't prevent the rest of the code from running at the same time. So there becomes two tracks of code running at the same time. And when the coroutine is finished, that track disappears and you go back to the one track of code. Think about any type of transition you would see in a game that could be fading to black when you switch scenes, moving the camera from one angle to another in a seamless way. It could be fading the UI in or animating UI elements. If you've heard of the word lerp or seen videos where people do these cool transition effects like a dissolve shader or changing colors, all of this is done with coroutines. Coroutines can do other things with time as well, such as just waiting a beat before executing something. I put a coroutine in my game Planetary Fusion because I wanted the players to have to wait a half second before dropping a new planet just as a safeguard. I just didn't want people to spam the space bar and fill up the entire game with planets. You can also do things that are not time-based with coroutines. Uh, sorry for throwing a wrench in here, but say you want to execute a function that just checks for something until a condition is met and then stops checking. That's a perfect use case for coroutines. Say you have a player that jumps, you probably don't want the player to be able to jump multiple times while it's still in the air. So you would want to run a coroutine that starts the moment the player jumps and checks if it's still in the air or if it's on the ground when the player is pressing the jump button. So you can decide whether or not you're going to let the player jump. A lot of people when they're just starting out will throw conditions like that into the update method because it runs every single frame. But the problem with this is when the player is on the ground and they're moving around and they're not jumping, you're still checking for that condition every single frame which is really not necessary. And if you have a lot of conditions like that, can start to slow down your game. Whereas with a coroutine, you're only running that logic when you absolutely need to run that logic. So it becomes very efficient. Okay, so how do we implement coroutines in Unity? There are a couple of pieces to the coroutine. There's the actual logic piece and the kind of coroutine framework that comes with that. And then there's where you actually call the coroutine. To write the logic for the coroutine, you're going to need to use the IE numerator function that's built in from the Unity library. All coroutines require a yield statement at the end. There are a few types of yield statements, but all they do is tell Unity when to pause and pick up the coroutine. Without it, the entire function would just run in one frame. And if you're doing something with transitions or over time or waiting until a condition is met, you're going to want to run the coroutine over multiple frames. After you've built your logic, you can then decide where you want to call it. 
And this is where you'll actually call out the coroutine method and place the name of your coroutine inside the parentheses. It's a little confusing at first because you hear all about the word coroutine, 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 but that also encompasses the IE numerator piece of this as well. If you want to check out how to implement coroutines in more depth, I would recommend checking out these videos of mine where I create a dissolve shader and then show you how you can change the dissolve effect and call it with a push of a button and call the actual dissolve transition. But anyways, I hope you enjoyed learning about coroutines. If this video helped you at all, please let me know. And thanks for watching. Cheers.